England were, statistically speaking, the best team in the World Cup group stages, with 7 points and a goal difference of plus 7. Their impressive 3-0 win over Senegal in the first round of the knockout stages solidified their impressive form, and they look set to take on competition favourites. But can England do it against tougher opponents such as France? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what England is doing well, and why a shift from the 4-2-3-1 to the 4-3-3 might be Southgate's best decision yet. Welcome back to Football Meta. If you enjoy this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. So far, England have scored 12 goals in their first four matches, and have only conceded twice during the whole World Cup. However, it's the way England have been scoring that tells a completely different story to where England were at during the previous World Cup. In fact, in 2018, England scored 9 of their 12 goals from set pieces. In this World Cup, England have already scored 10 goals from open play, with a much quicker attacking style of football that gets them in behind a lot more often. So let's take a look at what's changed, and why a change in system has made them a lot more dangerous. Firstly, the stats show us that England like to hold the ball for the majority of the match. While definitely not as high as Spain's 77% possession, England averaged 65% possession so far, the third highest in the competition. While England started the World Cup with a 4-2-3-1 and an impressive win over Iran in the opening fixture, a lacklustre performance against the USA was deemed too cautious and defensive and thus a switch into the 4-3-3 was made, with big differences in how the team would look to move up the pitch. Secondly, the replacement of the Chelsea duo Mason Mount and Raheem Sterling for Phil Foden and Marcus Rashford or Jordan Henderson certainly made England much more dangerous up top, and the decision to play Jude Bellingham as a box-to-box -box midfielder rather than a holding mid allowed England to have a much more threatening and dynamic attacking line. The big difference between the two systems is the amount of freedom England players have in the centre to rotate. While in a 4-2-3-1, England would often end up having too many players in the same position. Given Mason Mount starting in a more central position, it meant Harry Kane had less space to drop off the defensive line and act as a false nine. In turn, meaning there was less space up top for Sterling and Saka to move inside, and subsequently freeing up space for the fullbacks to push up. Eventually, this is what seems to have led to England's lacklustre performance against the USA, as the whole team looked locked in place with little movement up top to disrupt the defensive block. However, since switching to a 4-3-3, England have suddenly unlocked a lot more space to work with. The absence of a playmaker in Mason Mount means Harry Kane has a lot more freedom in the centre, in turn meaning there is more space for Saka and Rashford, and for either Foden or Bellingham to move up on the defensive line. Having only one holding mid also allows England to be a lot more creative during build-up. In the 4-2-3-1, England would often revert to a back three during build-up, with one fullback pushing up on the flank, and the double pivot in the centre forming a 3-2 shape. While this is a great base to launch attacks, it would often mean the opposition could tighten their shape to stop any balls going through the middle, and would force play out wide. However, the lack of a box-to-box -box midfielder meant the wingers would often be isolated on the wing and England would often be forced to rotate and look for another option. Now, since switching to a 4-3-3, England's build-up is much more resemblant to that of Brazil's, with both fullbacks out wide and only one pivot in the centre, forming a 2-3 shape. Against Senegal, this deeper and wider build-up structure meant the opposition would often stretch the cover passes out wide, meaning there was more space for a central pass into Bellingham or Henderson. The times when Senegal were able to stop these central passes, England would simply move out wide and forward into either Saka or Foden, who could drift inside or attempt to dribble past the fullback. As we can see here against Senegal, with both Henderson and Rice being marked, but space for a pass forward into Saka. The 4-3-3 allows England to have more support out wide, creating triangles between the midfielder, fullback and winger while also having Kane as a more central option, and Rice as support in case there is no space to move the ball forward. Once England move into the opposition's third, they have been excellent at exploiting the half spaces. The wingers, box-to-box -box midfielders and Kane take it in turns and moving into this position, with England creating a lot of dangerous opportunities when cutting into this space and delivering a ball into the winger cutting inside to meet the cross. These attacks out wide are reflected in the statistics with 41% of England's attacks coming from the left flank, and 36% from the right. Similarly, their heat map against Senegal shows how the left flank is definitely one of England's strong points, and will often look to move down this position. 
All of England's main threat and change in playstyle from the 4-2-3-1 can be summed up with their first goal against Senegal. Harry Kane drops deep to receive the pass, dragging the centre-back with him, and freeing up space for Jude Bellingham to attack in behind. Henderson now has space ahead of him to occupy Kane's position, with Saka ensuring the fullback can't come inside to cover Henderson's run. Bellingham's excellent timing and run into the half space and eventually is able to pick out Henderson near the penalty spot for an excellent finish. If Southgate had stuck to his initial 4-2-3-1, then a goal similar to this one would have been harder to accomplish, as Mason Mount would have occupied Kane's preferred position and Senegal's back line wouldn't have needed to push up meaning there would be no space for Bellingham to move into. So while England have been tactically sound in their previous matches, it's important to note some of the individual brilliance on display in this England team. With Jude Bellingham quickly becoming their standout star, with incredible pace, dribbling and passing ability to make him one of the most sought after players in world football. Similarly, Saka, Foden and Rashford have also stepped up to the task and have looked in total control throughout the tournament. Defensively, England have also been outstanding conceding only one goal from open play so far, with the Stones and Maguire partnership comfortably dealing with any threats they faced. But the strength in depth is also worth noting, with England having the option of Grealish or Mason Mount for offensive power, while also having a number of different options at the back, with Carl Walker or Kieran Trippier both being great in their position. So England are looking well drilled and fired up heading into the quarterfinals, but the Southgate's men have what it takes to stop an informed Kylian Mbappe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So if England can make it past France and eventual semi-finalists, they might end up playing a ruthless Brazilian team in the final. So why not check out this video on what makes Brazil so dangerous and how they can instantly unlock any defense. If you enjoy this content then please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching.